All right, welcome to another edition of Lesson Notes, and this time we are working with a competitive junior who's a 2025 who has come off playing a tournament and really, really frustrated with their iron play and seeing a variety of misses, but mainly if you were to put them in the two buckets, it'd be a pull and then just a very short high right, and then noticing uh, that the ball is not going as far as they would like. And so anytime that someone comes in saying those, I already have kind of an idea of what's likely happening, whether it's off-center contact or putting a lot of spin on the ball or hitting it too high. You know, generally speaking, a lot of these players I'm seeing are coming in maybe hitting too much of a fade. So that's kind of going through my head. So uh, this video on the left would be the the initial swing uh, before doing anything. And you can see there the club, the club data, obviously, that they're hitting too much of a fade. But so let's go through this swing and just talk about kind of what would be alarming to me. And then we can talk about how I went about fixing it. And again, my goal with a player is that they always leave hitting it better and then they can do whatever I'm telling them very, very quickly. I'm not one that thinks you need to go hit 10,000 golf balls to make a change most of the time. There are there are there cases where, you know, someone's going to have to put in a lot of time, sure. But for something like this, I can usually fix it pretty darn fast through a variety of uh, drills um, and intents. So as we go back, you know, there's nothing crazy in the setup. Um, one thing you can't see is that I did strengthen her right hand just a little bit, but you can't necessarily tell anything from this position. So, you know, the first thing it address is, or on the backswing, is that the club head is a little bit outside the hands. You know, this is not a problem, but in general, when I see someone doing that, I would say, you know, maybe they're going to be a little bit more fade biased. So I would be checking that. I don't think that was necessarily correlated here, but I do look at that and then, you know, maybe correlate that with something with the left path. All that to say, if this was more inside early in the backswing, it wouldn't bother me given that we're trying uh, to have her probably hit a draw. Um, as we go to the top of the backswing, you know, nothing necessarily there. Lead arm's fine. Uh, right arm is fine. Length of swing um, is irrelevant to me in this setting because, one, this player wants to hit it further, so why would I tell them to be swinging shorter? Um, it's only going to lead to a... Um, lesser club head speed. So you can see as we play this down, here comes the, the main problem is this steepening of the shaft on the downswing. Okay, so I'm seeing this. And so anytime someone's there, they're going to be really late to this yellow line. This yellow line would be the impact plane. You see, you can see right there, if someone is right here, they are definitely going to hit a fade or a toe strike or a pull or an overcut. So if we kind of keep playing that out, you can see the body's clearing pretty early, whatever, that's fine. And then we get to this line really, really late. You can see that, right? It's above. So swing direction is going to be left. You can see that six degrees left on the swing direction. And so the, and then the, the club is exiting below the line. So, you know, good shots are fine. Um, this was actually a pretty good shot. It went 111 yards. By the way, this is an eight iron. Um, I didn't, I didn't put the spin up here, but it's a little bit spinny, but it's a center strike and it's launching a little bit high, uh, 22 degrees for your reference. And then you can kind of see the club exits pretty low left there. So if we go back to address here, so I, as a coach, I'm thinking, what is something that I can do to fix this really, really fast? Now, I just generally see that players respond better to external cues versus internal cues. So let me define that. External cues would be like you're driving down the highway and you see a traffic cone. You immediately are going to move versus if there is just a sign that says that you should move, right? So when something is in the way, we respond much, much better than if we just have someone telling us or something written. And so with this player, I immediately started going into drills and you can see here, this is my number one drill that I do. I do something called a draw gate. So you can see there's a ball there and a ball there. And those balls are placed at about a 45 degree angle and about two club heads away from the ball that she's going to hit, right? So this immediately uh, creates a visual that she needs to swing between those balls out to the right, okay? Now, the second thing that we did is I told her that I wanted her to be swinging at this green flag here, okay? So a lot of times when I'm coaching, I'm trying to get someone to hit a draw. I give them baseball references. So this would be swinging more to right field, okay? Now, there are going to be things that you're going to see visually change in the swing, and I'm promising you right now I did not tell her 
Um, anything about her swing, about the shaft steepening on the downswing. I'm hoping that these things happen as a consequence of doing these external drills. And my hope would be that if a player does this enough, that it will change their swing without having to have a lot of thought. I'm sure that if you're a golfer, you've played and you've said, man, I just have too many thoughts in my head. Well, the whole point of doing external drills is to get rid of the thought, but to create a significant change without necessarily trying to. So let's play this video out. This was within like 10 minutes of, of this initial swing. So one thing we're gonna notice right off the bat is she took the club a little bit more inside. Again, I did not tell her to do that. I just think instinctively someone's probably going to do that. You're not gonna see a whole lot difference in the backswing here. The lead arm, I would argue, is in the same spot. But the main thing that we're gonna see is on the downswing, now we're gonna see, and if I go back to that other position, that is totally different coming down. The angle of the shaft now is in a much more um, neutral spot. It's actually pointing right at the golf ball, which means that this club is going to shallow. I know you hear that term all the time, shallow. Shallow really just means it's getting on this line a little bit quicker. So now the club head is slightly under that line. The hands are slightly above, which is fine. And this is just going to cascade nicely down this to where we are now hitting a ball that is starting right and curving left. And if we actually go back and, and kind of look at a couple points, you can see here the club head is just underneath. Like I like I said earlier, I did change your grip. So the club face is slightly stronger, um, which you can see on video. Um, but the main thing is the path is more right or more on top of this line. It's not underneath the line. So what is your takeaway? Your takeaway is that when you are struggling with a ball flight, you need to be able to define it objectively, saying, I am hitting a lot of toe strikes, I am hitting a lot of pulls, I am hitting a lot of over cuts. And when that's the case, instead of thinking about all the things that are wrong in your swing, I would argue that is a waste of time. I see far too many coaches that just tell you what is wrong with your swing. It'd be like going to a doctor and a doctor telling you that you are bleeding and not giving you a solution. Just saying, yep, you look like you're bleeding. That's basically what is wrong. And so don't be that person that can list all the things wrong with their swing. Come up with a drill. There's plenty of drills on my, on my channel. I'm sure there are other ones as well. Um, that are going to give you a very, very definitive thing to go do, a very objective thing to go do that will change your swing without you having to give so much attention and effort and so much thought. You know, good players, when they get done with rounds, a lot of times they'll say, I wasn't thinking about anything out there. I was just playing. Well, that, that's the point of all this. Um, there are some other drills. We actually tried this one um, with this young lady where I put a stick over the ball like this and had her swing under, and it worked great. Um, I just chose to show the video of this one just because um, this was a different drill that I haven't shown before. Um, just going back to the TrackMan data, so you can see the one on the left, uh, the club speed is exactly the same on the one on the right and the one on the left. In fact, the one on the right is a little bit slower, but we can see the ball speed was 88 versus 94 and a half miles an hour. And so that was a net of 14 yards. Now, yes, the face was slightly closed. This was a little bit of a start straight draw. But that was a totally fine thing to see given this player generally is curving the ball to the right. So this one curves to the left, 125 yards. I actually didn't get the track man down on a couple of them. We got the ball speed up to 98 miles an hour, which is going to be going 130. So to pick up 20 yards uh, in an hour uh, with your irons would be an insane, an insane uh, product. Um, especially with not having to swing faster. So there are a lot of benefits to, to doing something like this. And, and again, if you are taking lessons or you are going to the range, you should be seeing very, very good results very quickly. If you're not, you need to abandon ship. I actually saw a quote from Bryson saying something like, if it's not good within two or three shots and he moves on to something else because you should be able to do something that's going to lead very, very quickly. And I am telling you right now, if you just think about it, it is most likely going to be a waste of time. You need to make external cues that will increase how quickly you will improve. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I really enjoy making these. Hopefully you're enjoying me making them. Uh, I would love comments. I've gotten a few comments of, uh, lately that have been very, very nice. So thank you for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, good luck the next time you're at the range.